I'm good. I, I'm better. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're here with Jim again, who just seems to be taking over my whole life uh, because he's so smart. Jim, I'm getting kind of tired of that. Hey, um, I'm here for you, Bob. <laughs> okay, good. Well, well, Jim's going to show us again how smart he is. He's going to talk about uh, boosters because Jim is the re world-renowned expert <laughs> on on internet connections on the cheap, uh, and I'm and then therefore just internet connection in general. Um, but he's also a world-renowned expert on boosting that signal. Jim, uh, why are you so good at boosting signal? Um, because where I want to go in camp, there's not always a lot of signal. I want to be connected. I'm going to be connected. I've never not been connected. So you learned how to do boosting. I, I learned what I needed to to, to make sure I stayed connected and, and having a signal booster the proper antennas, uh, it, it makes a big difference. It makes all the difference in the world. So, and that's also why you have so many different services. If one isn't giving you a signal, probably one of them will. That's right. Um, in, in various areas I've been, from the Rocky Mountains, the Grand Canyon, out in the desert, I, I've needed one of my services at, at all times. And no service is perfect, not even Verizon. And so how many do you have? I actually have all four services. I have seven hotspots and three phones. So you're getting signal. <laughs> one, one way or the other, I'm going to have signal. <laughs> if it's out there, you're going to get it. I, I've reached out as far as 40 miles to find a, a cell tower. Oh, wow. Now, but a lot of people at home confuse Wi-Fi and internet uh, through a uh, cell phone. Make sure, why don't you explain to folks that this is not Wi-Fi? Nope, this is not Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is what your hotspot produces that you use. Cell, informa or cell data is what comes off of the tower that your phone connects to or the hotspot connects to to produce Wi-Fi. Right. So we're, you're not talking about going to McDonald's and, and boosting that signal from the Wi-Fi from McDonald's or from the library or Starbucks? No, I, I, I actually do, I never use public Wi-Fi. Okay. Because you're the master of cheap internet, you don't have to pay hardly anything for it. Well, not, not only do I not have to pay, I, 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 all of my services cost $56 a month. Um, combined? I, combined. Being the only person on a hotspot gives me incredibly fast service. I don't have to worry about somebody setting up a, a fake Wi-Fi that they can get into my computer or my phone and steal my information. I, and I don't have to worry if, if McDonald's has 100 people in it using their Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm the only person. Right. So, uh, so we just want to clarify that, that. This is not Wi-Fi. This is Internet. You have to pay for these services. You're not paying much, but you're paying for these services. That's that's right. Uh, as low as five dollars a month, up to twenty dollars a month for each. Right now, a lot of people wonder: Can you create your own signal? I mean, if you're out there and you just can't find, there's zero signal there. Can can these things get one for you? They they cannot create a signal. Um, there are times when my devices don't see a signal on their own, and inside. Using a booster, I will find a signal, but they're, they're not going to create a tower where there is none. Right. There has to be tower within, within a range that even the booster can get it. Right. And, and in order to re incredibly reach out a long ways, uh, it, it requires the right antenna, the right booster, uh, understanding where to find those towers and, and how to tune it in. You, um, I, I probably spend two or three hours tuning in my hotspots when I find a new spot. It, it, it takes some patience, but it's well worth it. Right, because you'll get the signal when no one else is. I, I not only get a signal, but I, I stream all my entertainment. Um, my If my phone doesn't get a signal on its service, I, I use Google Voice and wireless, and, and I get a signal that way. One way or the other, I, I, I can get out, I can communicate, I can stream. Uh, streaming the Super Bowl was wonderful. 
Now, a lot of the ways that these devices are going to work is by using a far superior antenna. And, and it's going to be, we're going to get a little confusing here, so I want to lay a foundation for the folks watching this of the different kinds of antenna. So there's going to be an omnidirectional, a directional, and then the little cheap one that's in your phone. Uh, so explain the different antennas and how they're going to relate to the booster and the signal. Alrighty. Um, the, the one in your phone is tiny. Just tiny. Um, the next size up, and I don't have it here, would be the little 4-inch antenna that goes with the mobile booster, the Sleek, or the WeBoost Drive. It magnifies to the top of your car. It, it's bigger than the antenna in, in your phone, certainly, and, and it does make an improvement, but out here in the middle of nowhere, it's not going to cut it. Right. An omnidirectional is the simplest good antenna to use. It can pick up a tower in any direction and uh, send that signal down to the booster. And and by omni it means in a circle. All the way around. Um, and a directional antenna, you have to actually be pointed at the tower in order to use it. That means sometimes if I switch hotspots, I have to go out and move my antenna to the new tower or it just isn't going to, it'll actually degrade the signal instead of improve it. Now we have a, um, a directional antenna here. Why don't you demonstrate how that works? Alrighty. Uh, this goes up on a pole. Uh, if the tower is off that direction, I, if I'm pointed like that, it picks up the, the signal. If I point it away, it actually degrades the signal. Um, you can't just put this up willy-nilly and expect it to automatically work like an omnidirectional antenna does. This will pull in a better signal. The omnidirectional is easier to use. So the omnidirectional it, it, uh, is this huge, broad signal, and this is very focused. This is very focused. I, I've reached out over mountain ranges, 30 miles to pick up a signal. Um, I've been in the desert and reached out over 40 miles to pick up a signal. The omnidirectional isn't going to reach that far and it's not going to be as strong, but you don't have to play with it either. You put it up, you turn it on. If, uh, if it's working great, I, I just wouldn't go and use my directional antenna at all. So now uh, we're going to compare two different uh, WeBoost boosters. Tell us about WeBoost and their name changes. and. Originally, WeBoost was called Wilson. Uh, my Wilson booster is the mobile sleek. It's made for use in a car. This is very old. Um, I, I don't have the little antenna on me that goes in it, but that would go out the window, clamp to the or magnetized to the top of the car. It works great. You're flying down the highway. On the highways, you're going to find most of your antennas, so you don't have to reach out a, an incredible distance. Out here, there's just not an antenna close enough for it to be effective. Mm -hmm. um, this, a few years back, Wilson changed their name to WeBoost. They repackaged the, the Sleek as the Wilson Drive. And it, it's the same product, new package, new look, uh, a little bit more expensive. More money. <laughs> Uh, I generally tell people to find the Sleek or the WeBoost refurbished and, and you can save yourself some bucks, but I think you can pick up a brand new WeBoost drive for $149 on Amazon. That's, that, that's pretty inexpensive and, and it's very effective. Now one, one problem with the Sleek and the WeBoost drive is your phone or hotspot has to sit right in the cradle. And it can get pretty hot in there. Your the the booster is down here, and it produces heat. Your phone and hotspot produces heat. Between the two of them, they can produce a lot of heat. And what they do is you don't have the arm on it. They normally come with two arms, and your phone or your uh, uh, hotspot slide in here, and you just take the other arm off because it gets in the way. It gets in the way. I'm right. I'm constantly changing hot spots and phones, one's larger, one's smaller, and I don't have this, this actually comes with a mount that mounts on your dash and holds your phone upright like this. I, I don't use it, I set it on the valance in my trailer, that way I, I can just 
set hotspots and phones in it, uh, move them back and forth as I wish. Uh, I, I don't I, I don't use the magnetic antenna unless I'm in the truck, so I don't have it here. Um, in fact, I hardly ever use this in the truck. Usually, I'm on the expressway and. There's a lot of antennas out there on yeah. the expressway. Yeah, on the freeway, you're just you're getting a good signal. Right. Um, Rarely don't you get a good signal on a freeway. Not anymore. It it, yeah. uh, it a lot's changed in the last couple of years. Uh, all of the cell phone companies are working hard to to improve their footprint. Even Sprint and T-Mobile. Um, it, it's rare that I don't find a signal out of all four of my services. Once in a while, I have to have Verizon or I have to have AT&T. And occasionally, believe it or not, Sprint or T-Mobile beats out the other two. They're, they're getting to the point where they can beat up the big boys. And they've got the newest towers, the newest equipment. They work really fast. So you've been using the Sleek for a long time and have, are really, really pleased with it. It works. I've, I've been very pleased. I, uh, in the Rockies over the summer, uh, nobody was getting any signal. I used it to pick up T-Mobile from Denver. The three people camped around me were connected to my hotspot. Everybody streamed. Everybody was happy. Okay. So now we're going to look at the new one. Now let me just say that Wilson sent me this one to test. If you might be aware that they sent me another one and I had um, Carolyn test it and she found that it did work. It did actually give her quite a bit of boost. So they sent me another one. And this one, uh, it always comes with an omnidirectional antenna. They sent me the omnidirectional antenna and also this directional antenna. So really, this is a test of the directional versus omnidirectional antenna and against the sleek. Go ahead and explain this unit for, to us, Jim. Okay, so this is the uh, WeBoost RV. And it's unlike the sleek where it's made to actually have the device set right in the cradle. It uses this interior antenna to rebroadcast the signal. You come down from your your exterior antenna. The exterior antenna plugs into this. Well, let's let's make this real visual. So you might be wondering, how am I going to mount an antenna up on a big pole in my car, my van, SUV, or an RV? With an RV, it's usually fairly easy because you have a ladder, and that makes it really easy. So how, show us how you did it here, Jim. Uh, since I, I need to be able to move this into various positions and, and not shade my solar, which is sacrilege, I, uh, I use a tire mount flagpole holder. I find the position I'm going to be in, set this down, pull the trailer slightly forward. Uh, it sits under the wheel. It's not going to move. This trailer has to move before that moves. I can also clamp that to the back bumper, the A-frame in the front. I can put it on the other side. No, I, I can move it all over. I've set a giant rock on it. I've strapped it to my awning. You can find the same thing that'll go into the hitch of your truck or car. It's a way of not permanently mounting my antennas and, and gives me flexibility. And this is just a painter's pole. Actually, it's a window cleaner's pole, but it's the same concept. Right. It, it's a, a three-piece extension pole. It collapses down to just a little bit taller than that blue, which means it goes into the trailer or my SUV very easily. And uh, it's lightweight, and I think it was $20. Yeah. So that's how you can get uh, your antenna way up in the air or as far up in the air as you want uh, without much problem. So your exterior antenna is way up on the outside. Cable comes down and goes to this. And it goes to this. Uh, this plugs into either 110 or 12 volt. Another cable comes to this and you place this inside the cabin where it's convenient for you. Uh, this rebroadcasts the signal for a short distance around the unit. And, and it makes it so that, well, if you, you can sit there and use your phone like normal, you can use an iPad. Um, you, you can use a hotspot. It doesn't have to be immediately on, on top of the device. Uh, we did find that it worked best on top of the device. Right, much better. It doesn't, well, yeah, but it doesn't have to be right on top of the device. You, you can be a short distance away and be comfortable sitting on a couch or in a chair and not have to, not be restricted to uh, 
just the, the cradle. If I use a phone in the cradle, I have to use a Bluetooth hot, uh, headphone and microphone to make a phone call. This, I, I would not need that. So when we've been, you've been testing them for a while, uh, as scientifically as you can, which in your case is pretty good. You're, you're, you're very methodical in all your testing. So we have the two devices. We have the WeBoost Drive 4GX. This is uh, $500, and it doesn't include the, omni the directional antenna. And the Sleek, um, well, neither of them include a directional antenna. They both come with an omnidirectional. You replace that with a directional antenna, and we've tested them uh, both with the directional antenna. Correct. And the Sleek uh, is, I think, full retail on, an on Amazon is $179, and if you watch, you can get them for $149 on sale. Right. Uh, or you can get them refurbished for less. Uh, you can find a, a WeBoost Drive for $129 on Amazon or eBay. Uh, that's the and it's the drive that's a $149 brand new on Amazon. Um, and uh, like you said, these are these are considerably more expensive. Five hundred bucks. Get. This is five hundred bucks. This is full retail is 179 and on both with both of them you're buying the external antenna and both of them you have to buy an external antenna to get directional to, to get a directional antenna now the omnidirectional antenna that comes with this is much larger much more powerful much better however setting this up to use in your car while you're driving down the road would be a, a major pain the that's probably the one big uh, improvement to the sleek is you, you can actually plug it into your car i can plug it into my rv i can use the little antenna i can use the big antenna right um maybe if you were driving an rv a, a motor home this would be effective going down the road um you're not going to put it in a servette okay so here's the moment of truth we've compared these two directly against each other uh, as far as we can make it exact same situation uh, the same antenna, we just unplug it from this one to put to this one, back and forth. Um, a as far as we can make it, these are identical tests. $500, $179, which one's better? Um, it, it depends on what's better for your needs. You're not going to be able to use a phone sitting on a couch with the sleek. You're, the, on the other hand, being able to set something directly in the cradle compared to having it a distance away from the emitter is better on the sleek automatically. We actually found that if you touch the hotspot or the this phone... This is a hotspot, let's say that. Yeah, this, this is my T-Mobile hotspot. This is what we use to test it with. If I actually touched it to the emitter with the directional antenna, it beat the sleek by about 10 dB. Right. However, if you got as far as six inches away, then they were about the same. Then they, they were starting to get the same. If you get two or three feet, it really, the, the signal from this really degraded quickly. Really degraded. Um, now, whether or not it, it still improves your service enough to be able to walk around your RV, I, I don't know, that's up to you. But if, for the extra money to get the, the actual highest boost, you still need to be right on top of the emitter. Right. Um, so in, in my book, the sleek that, you know, compared apple to apple, right on top of each emitter, well, the sleek's a lot less money. A whole lot less money. 179 versus 500, you lose the advantage of being able to move it around because on both of them, to get the full advantage, uh, it had to be touching both. It has you. You either have to be in the cradle, or you have to be touching the indoor emitter. Right. And uh, again, the sleek can go into a car, move just, around, and, and and it's easy to move around. You don't disconnect anything. You just unplug it, stick it in the car, put the magnetic mount up, and and you're off and running. So in my use, I almost always use a hot spot. So you yeah, don't care. I don't care. Well, if I put a hot spot in there. Excuse me, you, you can, uh, if, if you're parked over there, you can sign into my hotspot and watch Netflix. 
Uh, there, there's no way this is going to let somebody in an RV 20 feet away use no. your signal. No, you're you're uh, you're losing too much, way well, too much. Well, I, in in my instance, I, I think if I was at the wrong end of my trailer, I You'd I wouldn't get any, I'd get nothing at all. In fact, you might be worse because you're indoors rather than outdoors. Right. If your phone was out or your hotspot was outdoors, it would be better than using this indoors 20 feet away from the emitter. Yeah, I, I have had a situation where I worked with somebody that uh, we were trying to use the, the uh, RV unit and in order to get a signal, I had to leave their trailer. It just, you, you had to be right on top of it or nothing at all. Right, so I know this is a little complicated, uh, the question is, does the 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 hotspot touching it? A phone. Let's say you have a phone. You're using your phone as a hotspot. Well, does it have to be touching it or you, can you walk around with it? And it turns out to get the advantage, you have they both actually actually have to be touching. Uh, and if they are, if you use them like that, uh, the 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 device touching both ones of them in the cradle or actually touching it, then you get about 10 decibels. So the difference between these two is $320. Right, if you're touching both emitters, you, you get a slight different uh, improvement using the RV unit. Uh, you lose the ability to move the unit around. Now, for that $330, you do get a much nicer omnidirectional antenna. Um, yes. Now, does that price include the no, the directional. No, it okay, does not. So you got, either way, you got to go buy the directional, which makes probably is a huge difference. Um, well, it, the directional makes a monster difference. It does. I, I, uh, I, I almost never use my omnidirectional antenna. In fact, I've been places where I've had the directional antenna. Somebody else has had the omnidirectional antenna. They're signing into my hotspot. They, um, they just don't get any signal at all. Uh, it, it requires the tuning that the directional antenna is going to give you. Right. So that's about all we really need to tell you is that if, if, if you just absolutely have to have a signal and that 10 decibel is is worth the $330 to you, then then that's the, then this is the way to go. Um, I mean, it's just going to give you, maybe it'll give you a signal when there's no other way to get one. But that's going to be a real rare exception. Well, it's going to have to be because I've been out here over a year and I've been in some pretty extreme boondocking situations. I've never once been without a signal yet. The sleek, is, the sleek and a directional antenna is always provided for me. And as I mentioned, I've, I've been 30, 40 miles away from the uh, antennas or the towers. I, I've been had mountain ranges in between me and the towers. The, the sleek is... Honestly, the sleek is more than worth it. For the money you, you pay for it, it's actually outstanding. So the bottom line is here, folks, buy a sleek, that's the old name for Wilson Electronics, and now the new one is Drive. The, the WeBoost Drive, they, they both do the same thing. They both react the same way with a, uh, a good directional antenna. The uh, we, WeBoost Wideband directional antenna expands its abilities to cover uh, frequencies that are now coming online that weren't around when the original sleek was designed so you you can improve it with a good antenna and for the money i my setup is two hundred dollars for a re, refurbish the cord the antenna i've never been out right so that's what we're recommending we're not actually recommending this it does have a, a boost, a slight improvement. Um, to us, it doesn't seem like it's worth it for that extra $330. Buy the Wilson Sleek or new, new WeBoost Drive and you're with the antenna. And then spend the money to get this and the cable to run it, and you're going to be really glad you did. Yeah, it, the, these antennas are $45. Right. And then the cable is probably another $10 or $20? Uh, the cable I use is $20. $20. Bucks. So, so yeah, you're 200 bucks set up and ready to go. So you just can't beat this. Right. Okay, there you have it, folks. Um, we'll put links for all these things down in the uh,
down in the description so you can go to Amazon and get them. Well, once again, Jim, thank you so much for really cutting through. Uh, this is kind of a complex issue, directional, omnidirectional, uh, 10, de 10, 10 dB dense. or whatever. Um, but thanks for helping us cut through it. I think we've really clarified this for a lot of people. I, I had a blast setting it up and, and testing it and, and getting to the bottom of it. it I, I'd love to say the, the more expensive unit was really worth the money, but I don't. I just don't feel it is. You wouldn't spend the money for it. I, I certainly wouldn't. It, it's much more complicated to install. It's much more complicated to use. Oh, and, and it also uses more power. Right. A lot more power. Um, I... I I was testing it. It uses at least one and a half amps constantly, up to two amps. Um, my Wii Boost, if it's not charging a hot spot, only uses one amp. So double the power, which makes a difference. That that's considerable when you're out here and you need your power to last overnight, and it's a cloudy day, and you need your solar to provide for you. Um, that can be a big difference. Can be a really big difference. So, Jim, if people are interested and would like to learn more, you're you're just such a helpful guy. How can they get hold of you? You can get a hold of me at jim at jimindenver.com. We'll have solar, solar cooking, internet, all kinds of information for people to learn. And, um, or see me on YouTube with Bob. Yep, because yeah, he seems to be here all the time. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. I hope uh, hope you we've given you an idea. Some uh, for just a couple hundred bucks, you can drastically improve your cell signal with a WeBoost uh, by uh, product, um, either 500 for the ultimate or 200 for a really really screaming deal on the drive. So or the sleek, either one. Okay, folks. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe on the channel, and we'll talk to you later.